Hello, friends. Welcome to week two. Um, last week we looked at concentration, which was mostly a review of before, you know, the pandemic. And this week uh, is solution stoichiometry, which is mostly brand new. Um, so if you are looking at these notes and um, hoping you're doing one of two things, either you printed this page out and you're going to take the notes on there, or if you didn't, you just want to take them in your notebook, make sure that you uh, like pause it before I do like the example problems here at the bottom and things like that so you can write them down and have enough time. Okay, let's jump in. Uh, solution stoichiometry will look familiar to you because we've done a lot of different kinds of stoichiometries and I told you this uh, the second semester here would, would um, involve you know lots of different topics but the like thread that kind of unites everything is stoichiometry. So you use stoichi solution stoichiometry when you want to know about a reaction that involves a solution, whether you're like taking a solid and dropping it into a solution, or if you're going to mix two solutions like A and B and you want to know how much of some product you make, that's when you use sol solution stoichiometry. The key to solution stoich problems um, is that uh, is molarity. And you need to um, understand that molarity is um, not just the concentration, but also a conversion factor. So something like five molar, that's how we'd write it. And um, it's best to think of that as either five moles of something per one liter, because that's what the capital M means, right? Moles per liter. Or you could flip it if you need to and have one liter on top and five moles of something on the bottom. And you can't read the pencils, so I'm going to switch. And there's, um, so that's really the key is using these two conversion factors. Obviously the number won't always be five, but like recognizing that a capital M really means moles per liter, that is gonna make your life a lot easier for solution stoichiometry. There's sort of three kinds. Uh, if you remember gas stoichiometry, which seems like a hundred years ago, uh, had two kinds. Solution stoichiometry has three kinds of problems and I'm gonna write general forms of each of them right here. So the first kind is that if you start with um, liters of one thing and you want grams of something else, Usually that would look like you'd have your blank liters of something. This would be given to you. We'll call that first thing, the thing we're starting at like A. And then um, you wanna convert, you know, every stoic problem is the same, right? Convert to moles, use the mole ratio, convert to what you want your answer in. Well, if you're at liters and you wanna convert to moles, that's when this comes in, the molarity. So you take the molarity from the problem and you'd say blank moles. That would be given to you and the problem is equal to one liter and liters so they cancel out. And then once you've converted to moles, now you can do the mole ratio. So that would be moles of A on bottom. And then the one you want to get to is moles of B, or we're going to call it that, you know, the end. And then you want your answer in grams, which should look familiar to you. That would be the molar mass of that substance in one mole. So you'd find that from the periodic table. So these blanks would be given to you like in the problem. And this would be molarity. So you would look for that capital M number. This is the mole ratio, of course. And they're all gonna look pretty similar to that. The second kind of problem is that if you're given grams and want liters, basically the exact opposite. So if you're given grams of something, you'd have blank grams of, we'll just call that new thing A again. And then if you wanna convert that into moles, you'd have the fact that uh, one mole of anything is equal to its molar mass in grams. And then we're back to mole ratio again. So you'd have moles of A on the bottom and the thing you want to get to on top, this would come from the balance reaction. And then you want your answer in liters or milliliters, which is totally you know, normal. So you'd say this is where the molarity comes in. You'd say one liter of B is equal to blank moles of B, and this would be given to you in the problem. Again, this would be the molarity piece. It's the exact opposite of that first one. And then I would say the ones that most people find the trickiest are the ones where you start with liters of one thing and you want liters of something else. So in that kind of problem, you'd have two different molarities. So you'd have to read those problems very closely, and I've got an example of those that we'll look at in a second. So um, you would have your blank liters of the first thing, which we're calling A once again and you would use the molarity from the problem, you'd say blank moles of A is equal to one liter. Again, that's written there, so you can cancel out. The blanks come from the problem, so that's where you're gonna get fill in those numbers. That's the worst um, multiplication sign I've ever made. Then you'd have 
from the balanced reaction again, you'd have moles of A on bottom, the one you want to get to, moles of B on top. This is the mole ratio step. It's the same for all of these. The middle step's always the mole ratio step. And then you want your answer in liters, but now it's liters of something else, so there'd be a different number in the problem. And you'd say that you'd have blank moles of B equals one liter of B. Again, these blanks come from the problem, so that you would be given all that information. And this is molarity. This is molarity. So I have a few that we could look at and try um, to practice. And the first one um, is, they go in order of the same as these, but I wrote it down here in case you, I don't know, blackout or something. So um, how many grams of hydrogen are produced from the reaction of 20 milliliters of 1.5 molar HCl hydrochloric acid with magnesium? So since you're given milliliters or liters and you want grams, that's what kind of problem this is. You're always gonna wanna convert your milliliters to liters first. You can either you know, do that in your head by dividing by a thousand. Or you could like tack it on to the front of one of these two. I don't know. It's probably just easiest to do it in your head, divide it by a thousand. So um, 20 milliliters is equal to 0 0.02 liters. And that's liters of HCl. So there's our first thing we start with. Again, we're just copying what was written right here. So liters and liters. And then the first step is the molarity. That's where this number comes in, this 1.5 molar. In your head, you shouldn't think of that as like molar or molarity. Think of it as 1.5 moles per liter, and you want to cancel out liters, so one liter on bottom, and you'd have the 1.5 moles on top. And just like here, the blanks came from the problem, the 0 0.02 and the 1.5 molar. The next step is the mole ratio. So in this problem, we're at HCl and we want to get to grams of hydrogen. So it looks like there are two HCLs for every one hydrogen. So mole ratio step from the balanced reaction. Of course, you would need a balanced reaction to do these problems. And finally, you want your answer in grams. So you use the uh, two grams of hydrogen and equal to one mole of hydrogen. The, the two is from the periodic table. And I messed up my old problem, so I'm sorry, it's unprofessional, but I have to do this one for you. So 0 0.02 times 1.5 times two divided by two. And I got 0.3. So your answer would be 0.3 grams of hydrogen for the first one. So that's an example of a liters of one thing to grams of something else. Sorry, 0 0.03 over there. Next problem is if you're given grams of one thing and want liters of something else, like this is the exact opposite kind of problem. And then here's the same reaction, magnesium plus hydrochloric acid makes magnesium chloride and hydrogen. This problem says how many liters of 0.8 molar hydrochloric acid will react with 35 grams of magnesium. So again, you want liters, how many liters, and you're given grams. So take your 35 grams of magnesium and start there. And in this problem, we're following the second set right here grams of A, liters of B, and so the first thing you do is the molar mass of the first thing that you're given. So on your periodic table, you would look for the molar mass of magnesium, which is 24.3 grams per mole. And then once you're in moles, you could do the mole ratio. So in this problem, I'm going from magnesium, which is a one, and I'm going to hydrochloric acid, which is a two. Okay, now you want your answer in liters. That's where this extra number comes in because this molar, 0.8 molar, means 0.8 moles per liter. So that's how you get from moles to liters. This time you're going to flip it though because you want your answer in liters. So you'd say one liter on top and then equals 0.8 moles of HCl on bottom. Notice how the moles of HCl cancel the moles of HCl. And so if you math that whole thing up, I think you get 3.6 liters of HCl. And if you wanted to, you could convert it, of course, into milliliters by multiplying by a thousand. 
this case it just says liters so we'll leave it like that 3.6 okay so then the last one is liters of one thing to liters of something else again this is the one that people have the most trouble with um, you always start with the pair see how these two numbers are paired no I probably should read it first how many liters of 0.5 molar sodium iodide will react with 100 milliliters of 1.2 molar lead to nitrate so you're going to start with these numbers. Uh, one thing that you should know about the capital M numbers is that they're always conversion factors. So you would never start with those. You'd always use them like on the inside, like we did in this problem. So we're going to start with the 100 milliliters, and we're going to convert that 100 milliliters of this lead to nitrate into milliliters of sodium iodide. So take our 100 milliliters, divide by 1,000. You could probably do that in your head. It's 0.1 liter of lead to nitrate. We want that to be in moles, and so that's where this 1.2 molars comes, comes in, because this is a solution. I mean, if it was in grams, we would just use the molar mass, but it's not. It's a solution, so we, what we do is we take the 1.2 molar, and we say that means 1.2 moles of the lead to nitrate per every liter. Arrange this way so that liters cancels liters. And once you're in moles, then you could do the mole ratio to go right from um, the lead to nitrate to the sodium iodide. It looks like it's a one to two ratio. 1 lead to nitrate gives you 2 sodium iodides. And if that was a solid, we'd use molar mass here, but it's not. It's also dissolved in water, and its concentration is 0.5 molar. So we want it's our answer in liters. So we'd say 0.5 moles of the sodium iodide in 1 liter. And then you'd cancel your moles there. And then so when you I don't know, math this whole thing together. You get 0.1 times 1.2 times 2 divided by 0.5, and I ended up with 0.48 liters. And if this problem said, like before, if it said that you want your answer in milliliters instead of liters, you just multiply that by 1,000, so you'd have 480 milliliters. That would be the same thing. So the math is not different. You just have to do that one extra step. If the problem said that, this problem says liters. So there's the three kinds of solutions to geometry problems. You've got um, liters of one thing to grams of something else, grams of one thing to liters of something else, and then finally, the last one we did was liters of one thing to liters of something else. Okay, bye!